He called himself the starter of engine programs, and during his four decades at GE Aviation, he was that and more. Arthur P. Adamson died at age 95 on May 3rd in Philadelphia, and leaves behind a unique legacy at GE Aviation. Without question, GE Aviation would not be the world leader today in jet propulsion without his significant contributions. Art was an innovator. He, he, didn't, he didn't just execute designs. He, he invented designs. Art was truly, uh, you know, one of the people who led the aviation development business, a pioneer, if you will. He was an engineering leader at GE Aviation for several decades, including a successful stint in Lynn, Massachusetts, and more than 30 years at aviation's headquarters in Evendale, Ohio. From lift fans and helicopter engines to the CF-6 engine family and GE's unique unducted fan engine, Adamson led the engineering teams that made GE Aviation a special innovator. And along with being awarded 32 patents and the Collier Trophy, Art mentored hundreds of GE engineers. I'm Ralph Pettico, a design engineer on the Unducted Fan Program. You know, I can still remember one time going to Technical Circus. Uh, I had an innovative design that I thought was innovative, and I can remember Art gently prodding me to come back next week with an idea that would work. But that was his style. He uh, could see things that that would work and should be pursued, and uh, you know, if they weren't worth pursuing, move on and come up with another idea. In order to get something across at this big company, you have to stand behind your convictions and you have to be tenacious about it in terms of driving it home. And that was art. I had the pleasure of meeting them every week for lunch with a number of other, a few other retirees. And in those occasions, I got to know them very well and to hear about his experiences in Kansas Farm where he grew up. We graduated from a one-room schoolhouse, went on to high school, and junior college, and went on to the University of Southern California, where he was number one in his class at the Tenth Engineer. Shortly after graduation, Art joined GE in Philadelphia and then Schenectady. In 1955, he moved to Evendale to work on rocket technology, but soon turned his attention to jet engines. In the late 1950s, Art became a technical leader on GE's lift fan program, and at that time took a young Brian Rowe under his wing. While Art was program manager for the J85 engine program, Rowe recalled him as probably the most intelligent person working at GE Aviation. When the U.S. Army awarded the GE-12 demonstrator program in 1967, Art led the design team on this radically efficient design. This led to a production contract in 1972, and the GE-12 became the first version of the T-700 helicopter program, which is going strong today with more than 15,000 engines in service. You know, he helped shape the whole GE Aviation and Engineering Division. He was able to get together good teams and get the most out of all of them and uh, do the right compromises for the best engine product. If it could be calculated that this would work and it would improve the engine, Art would go after it. In 1967, GE Aviation was determined to re-enter the large commercial engine market in a big way. The company turned to Art, who moved back to Cincinnati to lead the initial CF-6 engine development effort, based heavily on the TF-39 military engine. Brian Rowe would soon lead the CF-6 project and work closely with his engineering mentor, leading to the successful launch of the initial CF-6-6 on the DC-10. He created the design concepts that enabled the CF-6-50 to grow in thrust while keeping the turbine temperatures manageable. And the CF-6-50 was the first and only engine for the A300 Airbus. That was Airbus's first product, and we were on it as the sole engine. In the 1980s, Art would be called father of the UDF and leading the design team that created GE's ultra-high bypass unducted fan engine. That was a revolutionary engine, uh, totally different from, from anything out there. And Art drilled that so hard, from concept to flight test in four years, was unprecedented. When fuel prices dropped, interest in the fuel-efficient UDF engine waned, and the unique engine never had the opportunity to enter airline service. Without the composite fan blades on the UDF, it's unlikely the GE90 would have ever seen the light of day. By the late 1980s, Art retired from GE, but he continued for many years as a consultant. 
A couple of interesting things about Art is he did woodworking as a kind of a pastime. Um, when he would have us over to his house, he would show us his woodworking collection, which was, uh, you know, I just think part of his creative side. He always liked to tinker with things, so he took up watch repair. He repaired everybody's old time watch, GE. Everybody had an old time wind up watch. He would repair those. He was master of several languages. Uh, I remember riding uh, on the airplane one time with him, uh, going to going to Lynn, I think, for a meeting, and he was reading Italian. <laughs> so he, he knew that language well enough to, uh, to read it. In 1989, he was inducted into GE Aviation's Propulsion Hall of Fame. They tell uh, companies that you have to have the one in ten person to make the company go. And the one in ten person really doesn't conform with the other nine people. And art was a non-conformant. And, and that's what you need. Few engineers have influenced the jet propulsion industry as heavily as Art Adamson. But many enjoyed their time with Art as he shared his creativity, passion, and wisdom with those around him. Art, you'll be greatly missed.